This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. With Jamie Linton, Jeff McGuire, and Chuck Hines. Thoughts, comments in the 8th Morning Center chat line. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app for that. It's presented by Happy State Bank. Um, I I did not know him, uh, but surprised. I guess I would be surprised uh, just a little bit at the resignation of the head men's tennis coach, uh, Danny Whitehead. But then when you hear what he had to say, um, you certainly can understand it uh, with regard to having a young family and, and young kids and wanting to spend more time with them and and uh, feeling like that, uh, that that's what he needed to do. Uh, he spent three years as the head men's tennis coach uh, for Texas Tech going 39 and in 25, he was he was open. He was honest. It seems like raw, Jamie, um, and kind of feel for the guy. Yeah, talked about mental health and his reg- resignation, and mm-hmm. um, feeling like he needed to do the right thing for him and his family. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope hope everything work, works out okay for for Coach Whitehead and um, you know whatever it. Um, you know, obviously, I'm always have a ton of respect for anybody who says puts family above above work and above, you know, pushing their career to a higher point and all that. Because uh, I think family should come first and all that. There's a fine line with trying to do your best at, in your job and trying to, you know, reach the highest heights that you can sure. in your profession. But mm-hmm. I mean, what what's it what's it matter if if you're not there to be with your family? And so. Um, I respect the heck out of anybody that that makes a decision based on family reasons, and so I'm right there with him on that one. Yeah, the the cost. I mean, whether you're in athletics or business or whatever it is that you do, um, you know, for climbing the ladder, so to speak. Uh, sometimes it's not known until you know later on in life when you realize as things go by. But then, um, you know, you also look at this and. It's just a, a small kind of look, probably, at what the pressures these head coaches feel, you know, to to win, uh, to recruit, um, the twenty four seven nature of the job. Yep. I mean, that's that's what it's it screams to me, and uh, I and I don't I don't know how you change that. I mean, that's uh, I don't have answers for for how you change that. I mean, they. They have tried to do that. And when I say tried, especially with the football coaches where, you know, there's certain periods of time that are supposed to be, hey, this is your time to, you know, take a break. This is your time to recharge. But that it seems like that time, that window gets shorter and shorter each year. And then there's pressure to do camps and things like that. And I'm sure that that goes with other sports as well, regardless of, you know, whether it's football or basketball or, you know, tennis or golf or any of those things. I mean, the, the pressure to always recruit is there. And then the, the pressure of trying to keep the kids that you have is there as well, you know, with, with the transfer portal and, and the ease of which it can go. I'm always amazed at the effort and time it takes uh, to recruit a student athlete. And then sometimes how little time that you have with them. You know, you'll see this at you know, and, and you see, you've see you seen this here uh, with Texas Tech men's basketball where you go and you recruit and you recruit and you recruit and you recruit a guy and then he's here for just a short time. You know, as you know, if he bounces to, uh, if he becomes a lottery pick or, or whatever uh, or goes to another school and you just think about the effort that you put in to get and then you think about what, what you got out of that person and you're, you, there probably are times where many of these coaches look themselves in the mirror and go, man, is this worth it? I know the money's nice. I know, you know, what I, the, the benefit of what I get from, you know, being a head coach at a Power 5, Big 12 conference school. I mean, it's it's very handsome income. Uh, you sure. know, it, it, but there's a big yeah. price to pay for it. Yeah, and I would tell you that the, the handsome... <laughs> the handsome amount of money is a lot less for a tennis coach. Oh, there's no imagine. doubt. Yeah, there's no. There's yeah. no doubt. There's a no lot doubt. less. There's. There's no doubt. Yeah. Um, but you know, you, you again. I. I just kind of look at this and go. 
man, this this kind of, and I'm sure they know this. I mean, Kirby Hocutt knows this, and the others that are in the, the the administration, they're in charge of hiring coaches and probably trying to help monitor, you know, them in terms of trying to, hey, man, I, I understand you want to have your foot on the gas, you know, 24-7, but you got to take care of you a little bit too mm-hmm. and take care of your family a little bit. Sure. A little bit too. So it's, it's um, you know, it's probably an indictment of the industry. It, it's, he's not the first. He, it just seems like he's uh, he was a guy, though, that, really kind of spoke from the heart yesterday uh, when he uh, issued his uh, his resignation. I'm sure there was, you know, quite a few conversations between him and Kirby and his um, his administration, you know, contact because all the, you know, the people over there have a sport that they are in charge of and probably have a close relationship with the with the coach or things like that. Um, I saw with regard to the transfer portal, because that's what's going to be really kind of next on the on the list that you can I think enter the portal on December the 5th I think is the date that I saw okay so once you enter then you're not going to be eligible to play in a bowl game if that's the case and Michigan had a backup quarterback and it wasn't Alan Bowman uh enter the portal I'm like why would you do that I mean how miserable is your life that you you know you've just beaten maybe watched your team beat Ohio State and uh and you're headed to you know the Big Ten championship game, and you win that, and you're headed to the college football playoff. I mean, you're, you're a couple of wins from being on a national championship team. And and if you're another team, doesn't that just throw up red flags? Like this guy's not a team guy at all. If it's not about him, he wants nothing to do with it. I mean, go be a backup quarterback. Go go. I mean, you're one play away. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure where he was on the list. You know yeah. how far how far down he was I know, on the list. I know he was injured at one point this season and lost his starting job due to injury, and then just never got it back. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, go, go, go help your team and go hang with your teammates mm-hmm. and, and go compete for a national championship. Maybe maybe you you're the guy that has to come in because somebody gets hurt. Whatever. I I don't know. That's if I'm the other team, the next team, I'm like, is this. I mean, all about me, guy that I want in my program. Yeah, I mean, I, and I don't worry. There'll be plenty of them lining up for him, his services. I'm sure. I, I saw this the other day. Just ignore all of that. They'll make him a team captain on the next team and act like none of that happened. Yeah, I saw this the other day, and I thought it was I thought it was very um, insightful. Uh, it comes from Missouri head football coach Eli Drinkwitz. Uh, he was um, asked how, um, you know, basically the, the, about the immediate results of the of the of the portal and whether it was his school or others. And he took a moment and then he said, "This we are such a instant gratification era, including myself. I'm not putting this on anybody. It's the entire world we live in." We are trying to skip the step of adversity and growth, and you can never skip that in life. You are always going to have to face it, whether that is in your marriage, whether that is in your job, whether that's raising kids. And I know what has happened. We want to, as parents and as older people, we want to help the next generation not to have to face some of the hardships that we had to face. But man, the greatest generation in the world is the greatest generation in the world because they faced the Depression, the Great Depression, they faced World War II, they figured it out. I just worry we've got players that are going to leave our program, and I love them dearly, but maybe they're not excited about their role or they're frustrated because they don't feel like they're being utilized the right way. But sometimes you've just got to keep growing. Sometimes the grass isn't greener on the other side, and sometimes you're just trading one set of problems for another. I thought that was very well said. Yep, I agree. Your morning dose of coffee and sports. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Today is November 29th, 2022. Here's Jeff McGuire. Got to go in the way, way back machine for this one. Mm. 1894. The third Iron Bowl took place. Alabama beats Auburn 18 to nothing in Montgomery. Mm. 1934. Chicago Bears beat Detroit 19 to 16 in the very first NFL game broadcast nationally. 1952, the 17th Iron Bowl took place. Alabama beats Auburn 21 to nothing in Birmingham. 
That would be 58 years where they played just 14 times between 52 and 94. 1957, New York Mayor Robert Wagner forms a committee to replace the Dodgers and the Giants. 1969, the 34th Iron Bowl took place. <laughs> Auburn beats Bama 49-26 to in Birmingham. <clears throat> 76, Yankees signed free agent Reggie Jackson to a five-year contract. That would work out well. Very well. 1980, the 45th Iron Bowl. Alabama beats Auburn 34-18 to in Birmingham. 1987, Joe Montana of the 49ers completes an NFL record of 22 consecutive passes. Nice. I don't know how many of them went to Jerry Rice. Does he, does he get his due as an NFL quarterback or... Joe Montana? Yeah. In, in today's world, I mean, we just don't hear hardly... Anything about After, Joe. Before Brady's last Super Bowl, it was be debating between him and yeah. uh, Joe Montana for who was the greatest quarterback okay. of all time. I, I asked the question, so you, you, you <laughs> yeah, said... I'm, I'm with Jeff. I okay. mean, I think he's, he gets, he's, he's, thought, he's thought as okay. 1A to, to Tom Brady or 2 to Tom Brady. That feels like he's getting his due. And part of it is he's not put himself out there to try to get his... I mean, he's not said, look at me, you know, hey... I, oh, he's got some great Skechers commercials, though. He, he does, but I'm just saying, no, he's not been a guy that's waved his flag. He's got a new liquor commercial now, too. I does saw. he? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's not how he rolls, Chuck. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Although he's Good got an him. internet meme that is fantastic. He's got what? An internet meme that is fantastic. Okay. It's, uh, come, someone says, you only never came back from, you know, 14, 28 points down in the fourth quarter, and Joe Montana, with all of his rings on his fingers, says, never dawned on me to get down that far. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, in nineteen uh, in twenty fourteen, the seventy ninth Iron Bowl took place. Mm -hmm. Bama beats Auburn fifty five to forty four in Tuscaloosa. It is National Chocolates Day. Just any chocolate. Any chocolate. It is also National Lemon Cream Pie Day. And because you know reasons, I guess National Rice Cake Day. I wonder what the difference between a lemon cream and a lemon meringue pie is. Uh, the meringue is the stuff on top. The okay. cream would be what you're the make the pie out of. Mixed in together, okay. Happy birthday, Howie no. Man. No on the lemon cream mixed in? I'm out on both, yeah. Okay. yeah. I love Chocolate, the yes. Meringue. Rice cake, no. No I, rice cake, no. A lemon meringue for me. Thank you. I, I have no desire to eat styrofoam. Howie Mandel, 67. Russell Wilson, 34. Rapper, the game is 43. Stefan Diggs is 29. Larry Lawler is 73. Mariana Rivera, 53. Mm. And Craig Gentry is 39. And on this day, if you like conspiracies, oh, we got a couple for you. Oh, okay, I'm all ears. 1963. Mm -hmm. LBJ forms the commission to investigate the Kennedy assassination. Known as the Warren Commission. And in 1981, actress Natalie Woods drowns oh. off of her private yacht. They're still talking about that one. Oh, I think they're talking about the Kennedy one, too. Oh, yeah, they, they are. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. And that is this day in sports history. And uh, one uh, Patrick Mahomes the third was born yesterday. His uh, nickname is Bronze, according to his papa. It's mm. Patrick LaVon Mahomes the third. Patrick Mahomes the second. his middle name is LaVon. L A V O N, and uh, Patrick uh, said his. This one is Patrick, quote bronze Levon Mahomes the third, born yesterday, seven pounds eight ounces. So uh, hopefully we've got a uh, an offer out to him. <laughs> I think he's probably going to be pretty good at something. Good chance. Good chance, right? Can you can you even imagine? First of all, the pressure on Patrick Mahomes the second. His dad was a major league baseball player and a pitcher and a pretty good one. I mean, it wasn't to the level that his son is in in major league baseball, but still. Oh goodness, no, he was a he was a journey. He was, he journey, wasn't, but my my point was just going to be just but to make a major league baseball roster and to stay in the major leagues for ten years, you have to have quite a bit of ability to be able to do that. He left and went to Japan. 
He did. Because he was really struggling, went to Japan and kind of found himself there and then came back and was really good for the Mets and had a couple of good years for the Rangers too. But my, my point is, I'm sure there was a lot of pe- pressure on Patrick Mahomes the second, you know, growing up. His dad's a major league baseball player. He's in, but a lot has been ma- made mention of how he grew up in those clubhouses and got to see and interact with others. And that's part of, part of what's made his demeanor today. Sure. But now you think about the amount of pressure that's going to be on his son growing up. But I'm sure that they'll figure out a way to uh, to help him with that. But still, he, I mean, it's it's massive. Yeah, he won't be the first son. He will not. No, yeah. no, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, and other people have the same thing in their lives with, you know, if your dad's a really successful doctor or whatever, and mm-hmm. you're trying to do the same thing, then sure. you kind of have those same kind of pressures. Yeah, yeah. So it's not just athletes that right. live in that world. You've steered your kids away from this industry, right? I don't know what my kids are going to do. <laughs> That's on a, is that on a day-by-day basis, I don't an hour-by-hour basis? I don't think that either one of my kids want to... Uh, Grow up to be the radio star. ...be t- in front of a camera or a microphone. I'll say that much. <laughs> in fairness, neither do you. What's that? You don't want to be in front of a camera no, or a microphone either. fair, yeah. All right, it's just uh, before 7 here this morning on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? If Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five days a week together. Why why would we need to communicate during the weekends? (laughs) Save it for the show. We do. We We save it for the show. Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. I look forward to hearing from you on the Yates Morning Center chat line. A number of you have uh, have weighed in. You wouldn't uh, like my favorite one because that's uh, from the son of John Lennon. So you know. Which is what is it? So this is Christmas. Oh, so I like that song. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. but you don't like anything that has anything to do with the Beatles. No, so I'm not a Beatles guy. Son of I'm, a Beatle. He's, well, I mean, well, I, yeah. just because he's a son of a Beatle doesn't mean that he's a bad. Bad person, but I, I I like that song. So this is Christmas. I did not know that was Julian Lennon, but I, I haven't been never been a good title and artist and lyric kind of guy. It's been, it's been pretty well documented on this program. You know, I feel like sometimes I could I could sing a song. So this is Christmas. You know what? Do 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 do. Right. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to a little Christmas music. I had one on uh, my way to work this morning. It's good. So get to uh, get in the spirit. Uh, let's see here. Bullfighter uh, says, I'll never want Coach Prime to coach my favorite team. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of us would be right there with him on that, right? Definitely. Uh, Risa, uh, with regard to Natalie Wood, said that was her second favorite actress. Rita Hayworth is my first, right, Chuck? Okay, sure. Um. Let's see. Somebody says this. Jackson Mahomes isn't feeling any pressure to do great things. Uh, that's a bit of a shot. He said quite the TikTok. He's calmed down here in the last few months. We haven't heard as much from young Jackson. I guess that's fair. I think that yeah. probably so. Uh, so. I don't pay much attention, so I don't really know. Somebody wanted to know if Patrick is going to take uh, paternity leave from the Chiefs. Uh, no, would be the answer to that question. Have a coworker take ten weeks off when his wife had a baby and is going to take two more weeks at Christmas. That sounds. Uh, so that sounds like somebody's got a little, little bitterness there. But uh, ten weeks seems to be a bit much if you're the dad. I would think that's only legal if there are health reasons for, like if the mother is sick you, afterwards. You would or think something. so, right? Right. There's that would be, be the only way be, that that would be allowed. There's got to be more of that story, right? Right. The, I mean, the mom must be on, like, bed rest or something yeah. after that. Uh, Robert says... Surely, that, surely that just for a regular pregnancy, that wouldn't be the case. Ten weeks. I mean, you have to take a certain percentage off your compensation, I would think. You're not getting a 
Yeah. Yeah. Her. Okay. Yeah. You can take one, 10 weeks off, but we're not going to pay you. Maybe one of those deals. <laughs> right, but right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's got to be a serious health my, issue. My bet is that some of the work from uh, his coworkers falling on to him. Yeah. And picking and, up the slack. Okay. But I, I could understand him being frustrated. But yeah. again, there's got to be a reason. For yeah. It. Otherwise, your business is the most generous business in the history of ever if they're going to allow the male to take 10 weeks off mm -hmm. for having a baby. Uh, this passengers falling off of cruise ships is a common occurrence. This is from Robert. We discussed this guy that was found in the water. Until recently, the cru cruise industry covered it up. Mm. There is an international law that makes them report these incidents. I just uh, found myself mesmerized when I was on the on the couple of cruises I've been on. I just always was wanting, just looking over the edge and this constantly like, oh man, it would be so scary if you fell. Oh, so I didn't scary. know if you were thinking about taking a dive. No, I wasn't okay. thinking about it. I was scared to death of it, but yeah. like the thought of Don't it. Don't slip, right? It's just, man, just... No. Just please let me die when I hit the water. Right. I don't, I don't want that feeling of watching the cruise ship go away. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this from the Ace Flooring Center chat line. Fire sprinkler guy shut off the sprinklers on the south end zone yesterday for the new remodel of the south end zone. Super excited. Nice. How about that? Yeah. Will, uh, <clears throat> do you want to be there when the wrecking ball starts Wrecking things down. Would you like to see that? No, I don't think I would. Okay, it is going to be would. it is going to be weird next year. You'll uh, and I'm not sure what it's going to look like. If there'll just be a, a by the time we get to football season, be a, just a, a big open gap, or how's that going to work? Yep. You know, is that uh, you know what's it what's it you know how how much will they be able to do between now and let's just say next August. So, am I right on this timeline? They're going to, um, they're going to build the south end zone. It'll be ready in twenty four. Okay, May of twenty four. I think is the last fully done. May of twenty four, and then that's when they'll start working on the football training facility. When they'll, you're, you're asking the wrong guy. I think they move in. I think they move in then to the south end zone, coaches, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then they start. Tearing down the current football building to build a two-story building. Uh, Bullfighter says this. Bullfighter says this. Um, that he is going to provide us updates when he delivers steel to the south end zone. Cool. Uh, Chuck, are they letting you put your hands in the wet concrete on the new sky bridge? Uh, well, <laughs> no. It's just a pipe dream right now. It's just a just a pipe dream. Uh, Chuck, do you think they're going to show the video at the USA of Scotty Pippen dunking on Patrick Ewing on Wednesday's game? At Wednesday's game. What do you think? I'm gonna guess no. <laughs> okay, I think probably. Texas Tech will be respectful. Probably probably so. Uh, all right, speaking but of But how many heads of uh oh the uh, Spike Lee will be in the in the crowd? <sighs> I think it's too much time has passed. I think the people that are... Were, the people were, that would be holding the heads... I didn't say they'd be in the student section. Don't know. They, well... They don't know. Yeah, the people that should be doing that, they don't know. The people that probably could do that knowing are people now that have people, respectable jobs and... People that would be holding the heads probably know Patrick Ewing the most for Space Jam. Yeah. He was in Space Jam, Chuck. Okay. Yeah. He's one of the guys that lost his hey, You've not shown the young phenom Space Jam? I don't think so. Oh, my goodness. The, the other day... I'm just going to walk out. The other day, Karate Kid was on, and I thought about watching it, but it was was on Telemundo, so I was like, well, I, I, I won't get it. won't be able to understand it. So I, I opted out. That's great. <laughs> uh, we'll talk some uh, Texas Tech basketball next year. The new top 25 is out. They are not in it. Uh, but plenty of meat on the bone for this uh, this team left in the season. Obviously, barely have even scratched the surface of the non-con, and uh, you start uh, conference play in about a month. So we'll uh, kick it around a little bit next year. This morning on the morning drive at seven oh nine. Your morning blend of sports, K State. 
is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. I'm sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> and, of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. Questions, 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 questions. You get one question. What is it for me, Jeff, and our fine listening audience? Well, I'm glad you said I only get one because I'm going with a two-parter today. <laughs> Give me the Red Raider football player that you feel like exceeded your expectations this year. Mm -hmm. And give me a Red Raider football player that you feel like didn't come close to being where you thought what he would do or his impact this year. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, part A is, I think, easy for me. I'm going to say Xavier White for me um, as uh, as a guy that exceeded expectations. Uh, I, I, and, and actually, on Saturday night, I, I thought I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from him. Uh, Xavier White, in 12 games, uh, caught uh, 42 balls, 561 yards, three touchdowns, and his uh, longest catch of the day was uh, 55 yards. So I'm going to say Xavier White for my guy that exceeded expectations. Jeff, I'll give you my one that didn't in just a moment. Trey Wolf. Okay. Would be my exceeding expectations. Uh, it was a kip- kicking competition all through camp. Is what mm-hmm. we kept hearing and all through the fall and everything, mm-hmm. all all the way through it. And then got the job in the middle of game one and has turned into one of the better kickers in the Big Twelve. Grant missed an extra point in the game on Saturday, then also made a kick at halftime at the end of the game of regulation and in overtime to win it, and it was just nails. He was 38 of 39 on PATs. That was the only extra point he missed all year, and 18 of 21 on field goals this year. I mean, if you told me that at the beginning of the season, I said, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way that they're going to be with them going head-to-head like this in the in, in all the way through, and us having as many questions as we did, the answer was Trey Wolf. <clears throat> I, think, um, I think I would definitely agree with you on that one. Can I steal his answer? I, can I, I copy I think that was really good, but... Yeah. Um, I think your two defensive super superstars were way better than I thought they were going to be. I mean, we're talking about Tyree Wilson being a top 10 pick in the draft. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we knew he was good. Mm-hmm. But that good? I mean, Krishan Merriweather was a stud. He was all over the field making plays. I, I think my number one guy is Merriweather. Okay. I mean, I thought he'd be solid, but I had no idea he'd take it to this level. I mean, he's been terrific this year. So... Sean Merriweather's my guy. Okay, he uh, leads in unassisted tackles with 65. He leads with assisted tackles with 38, total of 103. Uh, he had uh, two sacks and six quarterback hurries and uh, two fumbles, two forced fumbles on mm-hmm. the season. So I, I think I think I'd like to copy off of both of you guys' uh, work there. I think those were both good, great, great answers. All right, so now. Who underperformed? Is that what you're saying, or di- just didn't perform to the level that you that you expected? That you thought he was going to be. Ex- um, I, I'm, I, and I don't know if this is fair to say this or not, um, because a lot was made of the tight end room, but I, I, I think I'm going to say Baylor Cup, based on what, or I'm sorry. I had that wrong, don't I? I don't know. Okay. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> okay. Well, you looked at me weird. so that's what, No. Uh, Baylor Cup, 12, 12 receptions, 132 yards, two touchdowns. Now, he might have been outstanding on, on blocking and helping set up the other guys. I'm, I'm not. I'm just, for as much as we heard, I thought, you know, in terms of on the Mackey Award watch list, blah, blah, blah. I just kind of expected more out of the tight ends this year, but maybe that was based on what your offensive line wasn't able to do for you and you were having to use those guys to block more, so that may be unfair. Miles Price. It's funny. He led the team in receptions, 
third in yardage, but yeah, it, I, extremely it's quiet third. in those though. Yeah, yeah. I, I had him. Well, no, my, just that as I, a I candidate, mean, he. I mean, he, obviously the injuries played a big factor sure. in that. But. Yeah, and, and expectations for him were higher than and he just never at any point the season felt like a number one receiver. Yeah, that's just kind of what, what I feel. I I feel like Baylor Cup is my answer. I expected him to come in and have a huge impact. I think it's very interesting that when who before the season started, who everybody was so excited about and expected so much from was Mason Tharp. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me you're disappointed in Baylor Cup and not Mason Tharp when they both had the same number of they had the same number of catches and. Mm-hmm. And Cup actually had more yardage, same touchdowns, yeah. but you're disappointed in Cup and not Tharp. Yeah, you know that's that's a. But he was injured for a couple of the last couple of games. But that's a fair. That's that's fair. I mean, you were extremely. I mean, the yeah. Mason Tharp fan yeah. club was uh, was captain what? right here to my left. Yeah, no, loud and proud in yeah. the offseason. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. That's 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 fair. That's a fair assessment. So I could have I could have gone with him. You're right. I think a lot of Red Raider fans would tell you. I mean, just combine the two: Mason Cup, mm-hmm. Baylor Tharp, whatever. We expected them to, to be a much bigger impact, make a much bigger impact than and, than they did this year. And again, I, I would. And you can throw Teeter in the mix as well. And again, I would say I would I would like to hear you know the from the behind the scenes you know from from the coaches of saying, hey. We would have liked to have been able to go to them more, but we had to use them more to set things up for the other guys in terms of pass blocking. Maybe so. You know, and that's why I said that's the that's the caveat that I would put on all three of those guys because, hmm. you know, I think there was times where you're like, okay, where are our tight ends here? What's what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. I just don't remember seeing them in the game I, as much as mm-hmm. I would have expected them mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, uh, this from the Ace Learning Center chat line. Cup had more hype than Tharp. I, I admittedly, though, I I had more hype on yeah Tharp I, than Cup. And I and I agree. I, I agree with what the texts are saying. That's why I say that Both. for me, for me, it was Cup. I thought Cup was going to have a much bigger impact than Tharp. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- somebody says just did a double take when Jamie said. Uh, but he did that on purpose. He he knows who they are. Mason Cup and Baylor Tharp. Oh, uh, yes. LOL. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he I did. was trying to make the point. Yeah, that no, the that, two together, we thought they were going to be a big impact. You know, as this guy's getting ready for work, though, he's cut, cut himself shaving. Oh, sorry he just about went, that. He just went, My bad. My you bad. Know, like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> 739 this morning here on the Morning Drive. Boom, boom, boom. is next. You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. He still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just... As much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. It's the morning drive on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. An hour from now, into the bench on 100.7 The Score with Choice Woodman and Jeff Haxton. We'll have the bottom line at high noon today and then... Our good friends Aaron Dickens and Mike Gustafson take over at 3 o'clock this afternoon with Tech Talk here on Double T 97.3. All right, a number of you uh, bringing up uh, the Tyler Shuck comments on the Yates Flooring Center chat line as we come to you from the First United Bank studio here in downtown Lubbock. And uh, the Yates Flooring Center chat line remains open. Go to double T 97.3.com for that or the mobile app. Benchmark hotline 2 at 806 771 uh, I'll just read these exactly as it's uh, stated on the chat line. So, uh, go ahead. Actually, I was going to ask Jeff if he could play the comments again. We'll see if we can get those. In okay. Uh, I've got the quote. I can read it for you if you'd like. Okay. Um, I think the second part of it was was 
the part that was a little bit more bothersome to me. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so here's the quote. Uh, he was he was asked about quieting his skeptics. Uh, I, I think it's a, a a fair question given that there's been a lot of discussion about the the quarterback room. He's come off of a good performance. You know, he had you know he started four games. Donovan Smith started four. Baron Morton started four. They're all injured at various times of the year. And and here's what part of what Tyler Shuck said. He said. I didn't really care at all because I knew they were going to be proved wrong anyways. He goes on to say, people on staff too, a lot of people in this building down the hall didn't believe in me either. So, you know, screw them because I know what we're going to do and I believe in my teammates. Especially how the fans and a lot of the media doesn't really matter just because I knew I was going to get my opportunity, especially the way we were playing, I was going to have a chance. You know, whatever, what's next? Yeah, I I think the part that while he's not an accurate, maybe he is. I mean, by saying especially the way I, we were playing, I knew I was going to have a chance. That's critical of the quarterbacks and the offense. But let's be honest: if Baron Morton doesn't get hurt against TCU, is he still starting? I think so. I think he is too. Because when he gets the starts against the teams that Tyler got to start against, I think Barron would have done fine, just like Tyler has. Tyler's done well. Mm -hmm. And I think Barron would have as well. So I, I have issues with that because, to me, he was criticizing the guys in that quarterback room with him by saying the way we were playing, especially the way we were playing, I knew I was going to get my chance. Like, I, I knew the coaches were going to know they needed me and that I was better than them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't feel like that's being a good teammate. Yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, if the, if the guys are struggling, then that's one thing, but you still don't say it. You still don't say it. And, and then I just didn't like the comment about the people on staff, too. A yeah, lot of no, people I, in this I, building down the hall didn't believe in me either. So, you know, screw them. Um, cause I know what, cause I know what we were going to do and I believe in my teammates. And again, they're coming off the field that, you know, but I mean, he, he, he nah, this is this, probably, this was not a heat of the moment. Well, I thing. Gonna, let me finish. This, I was just going to say this is, for, but this is probably 45 minutes after the game too. Yeah, so this, there's, there's time to think here. This Again, is not... he, he said it when he was coming off the field. He said some of the very same things to, to, to Chris Level, mm -hmm. okay, in the post-game interview. And then he waits 30 minutes or so and then says it again. I mean, these are clearly things that ahead of time he wanted to get out. Yeah. Uh, this sounds like Tyler was more or less taking shots at the coaching staff. And did you guys really think everything was all roses and rainbows in that football building? Come on, just because you guys fall for the – Head coach's car salesman talk. Well, You're talking to the wrong guy there. Uh, do I expect that the quarterbacks pull for each other and are not going to throw each other under the bus? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. But, I don't think everything's rosy. No. I get it because, I mean, it's, it's, everything's not rosy in our business. Yeah, in you know, anybody's business. It would shock you guys to know Chuck and I don't always get along. <laughs> Or maybe it would shock you guys to know that Chuck and I usually get along. We get along. <laughs> Sometimes Jamie doesn't believe me when I'm saying what I'm saying. Um, the number of times that Jamie and I have cursed at each other, usually after we've hung up the phone. <laughs> just, numerous times. Anyway, I guess... Today. I, I, it just seemed like... It just seemed like the wrong spot for those comments after a win like that. I don't know where the right spot is, but that... Will, Definitely felt like the wrong one. Well, maybe after your last game, your very last game, but I don't know. It just seemed it just seemed odd uh, uh, to me. So those were those were his comments. Somebody says this in Tyler's defense. It was Don Williams' question that took the press conference that direction. I, I thought, look, I, I had left the press conference by that point in time, so I didn't hear the nature of the question. But I think it's a fair question by Don to say, "Hey, how do basically how do you feel? I mean, you had a chance to quiet your skeptics tonight." First off, okay, that was the second time he said it. Again, Chris Level asked him first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and whether Don heard Level's question and decided to—that's my bet. Yeah, you know, add to it. That that would be my bet too. 
and I would have no issue with that. That's just good good journalism. Sure. Jeff, do you have Don's question as part of it? Well, let's play it and listen to it. Tyler, the last three weeks, three starts for you, three victories. Um, a lot of people doubted you and believed that, frankly, that Tyler should that they'd seen the last of Tyler Shutt this Texas State quarterback mm-hmm. after you got hurt again this year. Mm-hmm. How does it feel to you to, or how much motivation has that been for you to prove people wrong on that your bias was exaggerated? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really care at all because I knew that they were going to be proved wrong anyways, especially people on staff too. A lot of people in this building down the hall didn't believe me either, so, you know, screw them because I know that what we're going to, what we're going to do and I believe my teammates, especially all their fans and a lot of the media, it doesn't really matter just because I knew I was going to get my opportunity, um, especially the way we were playing. I was going to have a chance and, um, you know, whatever, what's next. I have no no issue whatsoever with the question. Me it was either. not it was not leading. It was not badgering. It was not trying to push him to a corner. I mean, he didn't come back with three responses afterwards. Who He didn't come back and say, who doubted you, Tyler? Call him out. You know, he didn't try yeah. to push him to do more. I, that is not on Don at all. One, one, 100% believe the question was completely fair. I, I, I do too. I think Don is very fair. I've been in every post-game press conference, and there have been times when it could have been much more pointed um, by any of us in that room uh, over the years, going back to uh, – Going back to Coach Kingsbury. All right, it uh, and Coach Tuberville. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.